Hello, this is Saxophone, and welcome to our behind the scenes <coughs> slash Q&A Celestial Scrapyard thing video that we decided to make because it's cool. I am here with Forgotten Dev. I'm the one who draws and animates stuff. <coughs> Sparkles the Unicorn. I did some music stuff, and I also said words. And yes. Sigma. Uh, hi, I'm Sigma. I voice That's act and stuff sometimes. I am still fearing his voice till this day. I found him inside my walls. <laughs> oh. Very, very true, sir. So, <laughs> to start the Q&A later, um, for now, we're just gonna start with some behind-the-scenes stuff. So, Dev, tell us a little bit about how you started your original Scrap Island. I have absolutely no clue. This was around the time I used to make content on TikTok. I'm so happy I quitted. But yeah, I basically made this random like concept that was like, apparently Scrapped originally had four arms. Basically, instead of a cylinder, was like a glass bottle, but I was like, wait a minute, this is a kid's game. No references to alcohol, so... But yeah, basically the reason why I chose a glass bottle was because, uh... Is it because Scracked is drunk? Uh, no, it's because it was transparent, and <laughs> able to be able to see oh, all Scracked's arms. Enough. But, uh, yeah, basically, uh, I made a bunch of concepts in my, uh, notebook. Apparently I was like, oh boy, time to, make, time to make a scrap element. The only two concepts that made it out alive were Stimulian and Trasher. But I decided to quit out on a scrap island because it sounded horrible. Until, uh, Sparkles came around and it was like, hey, I'm making music for you. I'm like, oh, <laughs> We'll talk more about how the first version of the Celeste Scrapyard song <laughs> later, but first we- <laughs> It's really bad. But first we should mention that Celestial Scrapyard used to be called Scrap Island, and it was a breeding island where the main gist was three monsters from Plant Island were like, oh, what's, what's this? And then they fall into like a world and it's like, oh, broken metal. We're gonna breed with broken metal. That makes so much sense. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, so I think now is a good time to talk about how we originally went around to do the song, because there's your origins for what Scrap Island used to be. And then, so, so the song, you go, take it away, Sparkle. <laughs> yeah, the song came out at the beginning of me making the song. It was pretty all right for beginning a song. And then I started to apply this broken down effect to every instrument for some reason oh no which made it sound not so good there were some prototype sounds like placeholder sounds since i didn't have a sound font for some of them so that also made it a little bad and then okay. this is one of my favorite parts um trasher's um vocal in this version is not in the correct no tempo. it definitely was not yeah it was also very off key i don't even think yeah. you had a key there was no there was no there was progression there was no yeah. key it was it was a random i don't even of sound and tumultuousness and even before that i had made songs that i had like posted yeah and like they like, weren't even back. i had even made like fnaf island oh my god fnaf island was <laughs> that was the funniest yeah I, that's, I, I, that's how i met you actually was yeah. from fnaf island and that's how i, I met you but basically, I had gone back and listened to the FNAF Islands, and after I started listening to it for a moment, I realized that Gracked would not have sounded like it does if it wasn't for FNAF Island. I did see that. Yeah, the effect that I put on Mangle's sound font was the same effect that I had put on Scrap. Okay, anyways, we're getting off topic. <laughs> so also stick around for us to play the um, full prototype song. Oh my god.
anyways, as I was saying, so I started with the bass for the song. I took the part that was intended for Scratch and I sped it up plus 50 BPM. And then I put the bass line over it. And then I started with Grandma Thusk, but it had a different sound font. And then Totoroli and Slammer, which were the percussion, that never changed. Tomb bits that never changed. Uh, and I already talked about the music. Um, <laughs> basically, how I joined was that Sparkles came up to me after we had talked a lot about FNAF Island, which I'm pretty sure is how we know. And he was like, hey, so there's this thing going on and we need music. Can you help? And I'm like, yeah, sure. And then from there, all of this was before we even knew it would be called Celestial Scrapyard. Because when I joined, I was like, okay, this has a lot of potential. Like, dev art was really good. And so far, the song was sounding really good. So I was like, this yeah. should be a little bit more special than just like a regular breeding island. So I started to think, and I was like, okay, maybe we can this into like something like the like Dublin or Celestial. Um, and when but... you had joined, was like the point of the song production of my version that was like the best version of the song. And then it kind of started going like really downhill super fast <laughs> after that. Especially yeah. since there was mass confusion between us. Because we didn't we both know who was gonna compose. Yeah, would be like, wait a minute. Wasn't I supposed to compose that? <laughs> oh my god. Like, we each did what the other person was supposed to do at one point, and we were just like, yeah, I'm pretty sure sucks should just do this, and I help with, like, extra sounds. Yeah, because there were a couple of sound fonts that I didn't have. And specifically, yeah. specifically for uh, Runo, I was like, I'm pretty sure there's a pop and pan sound font on GarageBand. I'm pretty sure it's I what actually, was used for Crane Isle in I'm pretty in sure I TLL. used... I think I used mainly pots and pans, and then I also used another one, knickknack. I can't remember oh, okay. what the third one was. And the yeah. secret fourth sound font, trained from yeah, <laughs> was <laughs> trained from, from <laughs> Dawn of Fire. Um, but yeah, that's how I joined. That's mainly how we developed the song. So I think now, if we don't have anything else, we can get into the Q and A. Is there anything else you guys want to add? Um. Oh yeah. So maybe two weeks before the full song release, I decided to redesign like <laughs> seventy. Or Five percent of the scraps. Oh, right. Dev had last minute redesigned. But Screecher and Scarpy were like the only ones who weren't redesigned. But Screecher and Scarpy will be re redesigned sooner or later for the sake of uh me animating. Just for fun. Yes. Now. So I Shall think we need to part now, from this segment. I think now is time to get into the Q and A segment. So <laughs> oh. I made a post. <laughs> yes, I made a post on my community tab and on discord uh for questions and we actually got yeah though, we got a decent amount of questions so sigma if you would like to read out the questions in the q a channel all right all right where did you get the idea slash concept for all the scrapsters the main way how it came up with what the scrapsters was just i had a couple sounds already done for the song we needed we needed a scrapster that would play this instrument and so, so they weren't really based off of anything it was just so you made make you, a design on you paper. made the you made the sounds first essentially and then yes you made the most of the time okay. but yeah tldr most of the scrapsters were just drawn in ms paint and then dev finalized it they weren't really based yeah. off anything like really cool i think we can move on to the next question but Oh, so the question? that that yeah. previous question was from Carson but Prodigen. Um, this question is by Gobbly Gaming. How did you get the design for Ku Clock? So basically, I wanted a grandfather clock, and yeah. then Dev didn't make a grandfather clock. He made like some weird shape, and then for the redesign, I was like, "Hey, can you make it look more like a grandfather clock?" And then, yep, that's the thing. Um, this question is by a recurring character, um, Crunchy Lemonade. You'll see a lot of questions from him. Yeah. Um, will we see more Scrapters with different combos of essence? Scrapsters were based off of uh, off certain elements by their creators, the Celestials, but there's not really going to be any combo elemental Scrapsters. I and we have not specifically I discovered any other type of Scrapsters yet. Nope. That's not to say that there will be, but well, there is a chance. Um, this is from... Uh... Where did Entity 13 come from? We don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, this, is, this is from Carson, but Prodigy. Have you thought of any new mechanics slash oddities to add to the scrapyard? Um, actually, I can answer this. Um, yeah. Back when we first started, because the, mainly the idea for like the teleporting and the essence thing, uh, which before I knew that essence was a scrap thing for Dawn of Fire, I didn't know that was actually a thing. So yeah. when, I, when, I, when I said essence, everyone was like, oh, it's the thing for Dawn of Fire. But yeah, in my head, it was my just first like instinct. Yeah, in my head, it was just like the liquefied form of like a monster egg would just be called essence. I didn't know it was a thing for Dawn of Fire, so that's cool. But an idea that I had before that was that 
you, instead of having to get essence from the eggs, you would straight up just teleport the eggs like you would a Wublin, which I thought mm-hmm. was like, eh, there, we can do this cooler. So I guess that yeah. it's technically like a scrapped concept. And like this later mechanic. turned into Amber Island. Yep, actually, true. Yeah, that's that's basically what Amber Island turned into. Also, which is kind of uh, cool. Two other things that were supposed to be mechanics were uh, the mini fridge. And then, in order to get your scrapsters, you wouldn't have to spend diamonds or coins. There's supposed to scrap, uh, tough scrap, and uh, Rusty scrap. But anyways, uh, I originally wanted to draw like uh, the diamond mine. Instead, it would have like a little drone. Oh yeah, had, like, I remember this guy. And, and in its animation, it would like fly into the mine, and you could see like light. Basically, it would come back to you with a sound of uh, with a set amount of scrap every day, which you would use as currency. V box is the most expensive thing, which realistically it probably would not be that expensive. Um, since mm-hmm. it's just a regular monster. But I mean, this isn't going to be an actual update, so we can make it as uh, as great as we want. Um, Unless yeah. someone made it a mod to the game, that would be. That would be, be quite cool. cool. That would be very cool. Like, I, I would hint, hint to all the modders here. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyways, next question. Alright, this is from Burba Boy. The Celestial Scrapyard have a connection to the Scrap Heap, other than being part of Scrap and Ruin playlist. So, for anybody who doesn't know, the Of Scrap and Ruin playlist is something you made by one of our fans, I should be the Wild Dance. Basically, uh, I think it was on the 20th, yes, there were four MSM, uh, like, fan projects coming out on the same day. Starting with Celestial Scrapyard, leading into scrap leading into Scrap Heap, which led into uh, Dapper Thrumbles, uh, it Melodic was Ruins. Something, yes, Melodic Ruins. Melodic Ruins, which led into Back Alley from Update Ruins by Ashby the Wild Kids. So that is what of Scrap and Ruin is. Do the Scrapsters have a connection to the Scrap people? They are in alternate universes, basically. So BD's yeah. lore is like, this is ha- what happened in MSM. And our lore is, this is what happened in MSM. So realistically, they would not exist in the same time. But- Ironically, they do not have any real connections, but that's yeah. not to say that they don't in any other universe. Yep. Next question. Uh, this is from Brunchy Lemonade once again. Will we ever see all the Scrapsters animated? Basically, I haven't had a lot of animations yet. I only have like two idle animations. There was originally supposed to be a beatbox uh, animation in full video. Looking at you, Socks. <laughs> all right, all right. So basically, sooner or later, yes, probably I might animate all the Scrapsters. But as of now, probably not because I have lots of other projects to do. Yeah, Dev is a, Dev is a busy man. Next question. Alright, this is from Burp Boy once again. Do you think we'll ever see Entity 13 other than some just eyes and claws? I think yes, outside, that is a complicated one. I think outside of lore though, for fun we might post something eventually. Yeah, we but may post universe, our hypothesis on what yeah, it could but, look like. Yeah, but in universe, no, nobody knows what Entity yeah. 13 looks like. But outside of like the lore and stuff, we might post something eventually. So keep yeah. an eye on my community tab, I guess. All right, this is from Crunchy Lemonade. What software do you use for making the scrap series, and how do you do that rust effect on the statues? Oh, is this uh, like a? Oh, it's an art question. Okay, yeah, you got it. <laughs> yeah, uh, so it's an art question. <laughs> Yay, I love all the art questions. So, I use Krita on my computer. Yeah, it has a bunch of tools that I like to use to make scrap effect, which is basically just a combination of orange, brown, and gray. Those are the three colors I use. I, I remember Sock telling me that someone actually had a complaint about the fact that they all composed the three colors. That was actually or Blake's have mistake gray. from the Magical Expansion. They have... They gave us that criticism. Yeah. Thank you, Blake. They have a lot of, like, neutral kind of colors. Um, I wanted to interject a little bit. Um, I, also, yeah, go for I it. also do art, and I will say that if you don't have access to like a drawing tablet or something, um, if you have an iPad and an Apple Pencil, get Procreate because you can animate and draw some pretty cool stuff on there too. Because that's what I do. <laughs> so oh, cool. I'm do that. Um, next question. Yeah, go All for right. it. This is from Burb Boy once again. Do we know how Scrapsters would have looked like before the rust, other than the ones shown in the video? I think yeah, this okay. question was asked multiple times of like baby forms and unrusted versions of Scrapsters. Oh, we okay. kind of showed them in the full song video, but yeah, for please. those that have not been shown unrusted and unbroken, we 
may show what they would have looked like before later down the line. Well, yeah. actually, yeah, I I am gonna probably make a bunch of unrested versions because Socks made a, another song that I don't know if I'm able to say, but basically goes a while back in the My Singing Monsters universe. Yeah, all the way back in the timeline. That is a future what if video coming out oh, not man. soon, <laughs> not soon. Uh, if there's baby forms, no, there will not be baby forms because the scrapsters do not age like regular monsters. They I, deteriorate, I decompose yeah. over time. Yeah, they don't they don't physically change. But will there be like a clean version of them, like like shiny and stuff, or all of them? If Dev wants to, then yeah. Um, but if he doesn't want to, no, baby. we're not going to right. force him to make those. All right, this is from Burboy. Wow, I look twice in a row from Burboy. Um, how were Thrasher's plants alive for so damn long? Um, the plants on his head? I mean, are they? Hey, it's me. I'm gonna interrupt this because we literally went on a rant for like five minutes on whether or not the plants were actually alive. TLDR, its body is covered in moss from when it was revitalized because of the plant essence, and that's what's keeping the plants alive. You're welcome, bye. Well, also, another thing I wanted to say, uh, a coincidence, Treasure's hair looks exactly like Potbelly's roots in the sprite sheet. Oh, yeah, yeah I, you did I show me that. Realize. This is from BD Zings. B, B yeah. Designs? B, B Dye Sings. B, B Dye Sings. Oh my god. Yeah. Notorious B Diggity. <laughs> it's Notorious B Diggity. Yeah, uh, <laughs> so he wants to know, like, do we know in what order the Scrapsters were created by the Celestials? Or were they made okay. all at once? I got after this question was posed. We in group chat we were like, okay, we got. We hadn't know because yeah. Fully. So basically, in the trailer, Gramathusk is the first one shown, and then we kind of said at some point that Gramathusk was the first one made, which was never really supposed to be the intention. It's just because it was the Mech Celestial making the Scraptures first. Would kind of make sense that it was Vamp's idea. The first one that we showed was Gramathusk, but then we then we came to a realization that if we go in the order of months, Gramathusk is right before Beat. Box. But Beatbox was the last one that was made. So our explanation for what happened is that first they made Gramathus and then Galvana was like, okay, I'm gonna make a thing. And then Gal Galvana was like, wait a second, this is gonna take way longer than I thought. So from every month, basically, from that point on, um, they made the Celestial in that month with each the, each respective Celestial until they got back around to Vamp's month, where Vamp didn't want to do anything because Vamp already had Gramathus made. And then that's when Galvana finished Beatbox. So it took Galvana a whole a whole year to finish Beatbox, and every other Scrapster was made in like, in like the span of a month. So, star cycle. yep, there is your lore explanation. Uh, it took us like an hour to come to this conclusion. Yeah. So thank you. So thanks Argued BD for getting us because we hadn't thought about it before. <laughs> this is from Crunchy Lemonade again. Oh my God, please. All right. <laughs> Were the Scraptors created before Starhenge crash? When it crashed or while it was crashing? Yeah, way before the crash because the crash was yeah. in current times. Um, yeah. But the Celestials, the Celestials cast out the Scrapsters back in the dawn of fire so the yes. trailer where you see this where you see the celestials make a make a giant egg and put the scraptures in there and throw them down to earth that was happening during the dawn of fire so yes i guess like a quick timeline the celestials make the whole world then they make the scraptures because they want to make artificial life then they throw out the scraptures because something bad happened which uh yes something bad happened and then the continent split apart and then starhenge fell and then they got turned into babies. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's another question about like if they'll ever the babies, but whatever, next question. All right, so this question is from like a completely random guy. I don't, I don't know him. Um, it's S Sigma, yeah, that's his name, Sigma. Um, so we oh. asked why is Sigma's jawline so sharp? So basically, right, lifting weights and um, genetics, that's all you need. And then you'll get like a godly jawline like me. And you're, just steal and, other people's genetics. Yeah, just yeah, yeah just, do what, just do what I do. I, I, um, I went to I went to Russia. I I met uh, I met up with uh, Giga Chad and I stole his balls and I, yeah, <laughs> happened. I I, I basically okay. am. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Um, next question. Yeah. Yes. Um. So, this is kind of deep. Do the Scraptors remember their past? Do they remember their creations? Do they miss them? And do they not realize that the Celestials thrive on a different landmass across the sea on Celestial Island? Do these newly revived Celestials remember their creations, or are they doomed to be gone for eternity? Dev, you can answer. You go. Right. So basically, uh, the Scrapsters always kept on to some memories of the Celestials, 
as shown in the trailer, but over time, they f slowly forgot the faces of their creators. They only remember the simple shape of their creators, not what they look they're like. Just, or They're yeah. just rusted memories. Yeah. That's really deep. <laughs> yeah, rusted. also... Uh, because I'm pretty sure baby Celestials are just like the regular Celestials, but way back in time. So yeah. that would be before they ever, they ever, and before they they ever made the Scrapsters. So they definitely Celestial, would not remember. Especially since they're also now on Celestial Island Reborn, technically. They don't remember anything in they the They just lore. don't remember anything ever. They yeah. just don't remember anything from their previous life cycle. And the Scrapsters barely remember. Which is also why in the trailer there is a scene where it's a couple of the Celestials, but their faces are all scratched out because that's mm -hmm. that's like a that's like a visualization of the of, but, the, of the memory. And fading. also being edgy this at three a... in the morning while making the trip. <laughs> also being very edgy. Yes. Here's a question that I just thought of: mm -hmm. If the Celestials keep their personalities and who they are, would they inevitably come up with the idea for Scrapsters again? Oh, absolutely. It's like oh, a yeah. time. It's like a time, like a time yeah. loop thing. Yeah. That would Wait, make does sense. That infinite Scrapsters. Ah! Oh my god. Oh. But I mean, I don't think there's nowhere for them to fall again. So, like, it wouldn't be a yeah. full time loop because they wouldn't fall from the sky if they're already on the moon. But I mean, I think it would take a couple, like, million years for them to age back to where they used to be. So, I don't think we'll be seeing doubles of the scraps or anything. Now, this is a question from Sparkles the Unicorn 58. Hmm. Well, what, an, what, an, what an interesting, interesting character, man. Okay, if Ooh. there were Scrapyard Word- Oh, this is about me. If there were Scrapyard <laughs> Wordos, would the narrator from the trailers, Sigma, of course, be one? I don't know what so that do is. So you, do you know what the Wordos are? No, I don't know what that is. Okay, so basically, bef after you stopped playing the game, they added these, like, Fursona characters for the devs of the game. What That the, were basically, oh my, like, no. they- No, they add- they like they just add lyrics to every island they're on, and they're kind of bad. I mean, some I don't of want the islands are good. Actor. We're not gonna get into this now. Wait, 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 yeah. wait, wait, wait. Is, 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 are those the ones that go like, nobody likes me? Yes, exactly. It's that yes. one. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Would you on the scrapyard? Oh, oh, oh definitely. I just, oh, okay. Just call me I in, that, that's what I. That's all right. Yeah. Yeah. So anything for more voice acting. Anything yeah, yeah. Stay voice. tuned for a what if of what if Sigma was a uh, wordo on Celestia's scrap yeah. It'll just be um, I right. also had no idea of that. I knew wordo just for Sigma. That's pretty epic. Totally confirmed, very real. All right, next question. Yes. Okay, so, oh my god, okay. So, <laughs> every other question that you're about to hear is from Crunchy Lemonade. Every single one. Oh my one. gosh. Okay. So, Everyone. Let's, let's, try to answer the, oh, let's try to answer these questions. Quickly, this, okay. this 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 video is like 45 minutes is recording alone so let's try yeah. to speed through this all right let's rapid fire come on guys is there more connections with the scrapsters and celestials that we don't know nope everything in the trailer was everything you need to know can different scrapsters like, take off their limbs and attach it to other scrapsters i don't see why not probably, probably it would kind of be scary <laughs> though and i don't think they would like it will we see rare versions of the scrapsters no the, we will not no. We will not see Definitely. rare versions, okay. though we could see a what if. Maybe a what if, but probably not. I don't want to do that because I feel like that's cheap. Okay. And also, yeah. rare essence is not a thing. It's, it's just not. Can we expect to see different scrapsters by using different essence, like magical essence or ethereal essence? We've already um, met ethereal essence, but magical essence could be a possibility. Okay. We There's will look into that, actually. Ethereal. That's a pretty yeah. good idea. Yeah, we we'll will look, look into, into that. magical essences. Um, what is the what is the entity 13's combo of essence? We don't not know take... because it, it was, was already alive when we got yeah. it, so we have no idea of. We don't know if it is a scrapster or not. It could That's be true. natural life. It could be artificial life. Be anything for all we know. All we know it's, that it is contained. Um, it's just a big mystery. Right. I guess. All right. Yeah. All right. Will we see any contests in the future? Yes. I don't see why not. Yeah, okay. I, I want to do one. Yes, I'm we, yeah. we should. I, we will I, host one. Um, okay, guys, two more. Why did you pick Celestials and not Wublins? Because Wublins were made by the Wobox, and the Wobox was made by the Celestials. Yeah, the Wublins wouldn't make life because they were already created by something that was created, so it would just be like down. They, so they it would be like way down on the list. Life. It would be really weird. One last question. Let's go. Right. What software do you use for making the trailers? iMovie, right? This one. Oh. This one is a question that I will have to answer. Oh, okay. I used Video Leap. I 
video leap. Hey, I'm, I'm gonna interject again. If you guys want like a really nice professional one that's easy to use, but it's also free, try DaVinci Resolve. You might need a little bit of like a powerful computer, but it's pretty good. That's what I use. Video leap so, is also free. Yeah, they're, they're both free, so. Yes. It's, it's up to preference and limitations. Yeah. All right, guys, that is all. Any closing remarks and, <laughs> and thoughts? Any thoughts in general? I, I just want to know yeah. first, before yeah. before we fully close off this video, I'd just like to know, what, what do you guys think that you learned from this experience and all these questions? Crunchy, Crunchy Lemonade is a very inquisitive person, let's just say. Yeah. Another thing, a lot of people want to know the origins of Entity 13, even though we ourselves have no clue. One thing that I learned is that people really want to see baby versions of the Scrapsters, as oh, well as Rare Scraps, which is kind of weird if you think about it, because I like, they're, I, they are in lore, they were never babies. Alright, yes. um, is that all the closing remarks you guys have? I guess so. Alright, everyone, so. this is the end of the video. Um, thank you for watching, and everyone say bye. Wait, 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 not yet, not yet. Before we end the video, I just want to say thanks to Dev and Sparkles um, for helping my YouTube channel grow so much in just about a month since Celestial Scrapyard came out. We went from less than 700 subscribers to almost 900, which is kind of crazy. Um, <laughs> it's been insane, and we're getting closer to 1,000. Um, and trust us, guys, we have more stuff for Celestial Scrapyard planned. This This project isn't going anywhere. Um, but, yeah, thanks, you guys. Yeah, that's about it, so, uh... Goodbye! Goodbye. Swibble-dibble! Oh, you consume your cat! Bye. Hey, everyone, I'm still in your walls.